Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve one step multiplication and division inequalities. We will start with multiplication and then move on to division. Now, when we solve inequalities, we want to isolate the variable, get it by itself on one side of the inequality. We do that by using inverse operations. So this is very similar to when we solve equations. One thing we need to be aware of though, when it comes to inequalities, we flip the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative. And we will talk more about this later in the video. Let's jump into number one, where we have 5x is less than or equal to 10. We need to isolate x. X is being multiplied by five, so we need the inverse operation of multiplication. That's division. So divide the left side of the inequality by five. Now, whatever we do to one side of an inequality, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced. So divide the right side by five as well. Now, as far as the left side, these fives cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So we have X is less than or equal to, and then on the right side, 10 divided by five gives us two. X is less than or equal to two. So any value less than or equal to two is a solution of this inequality. It makes it true. And let's check a solution to make sure we are correct here. Now we can't check every value less than or equal to two. That would be impossible. We have an infinite amount of possibilities as far as solutions, values that make this inequality true. So what we can do, we can check one value or more if we would like to see if this works. Let's use one. One is less than or equal to two. So plug in one for x. So five times one is less than or equal to 10. Five times one gives us five, and five is less than or equal to 10, so we are correct here. Our answer, again, x is less than or equal to two. Let's move on to number two, where we have 36 is greater than negative 4a. So we need to isolate that variable of a. It's being multiplied by negative four, so we need the inverse operation, division. So divide the right side by negative four. That means we need to divide the left side by negative four as well. Now remember, when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol flips. So as soon as both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative, that symbol flips. And here we are dividing both sides by negative four. As far as the right side, these negative fours cancel each other out. So A is now isolated, we have A, and then the symbol flips, and then the left side, 36 divided by negative four, gives us negative nine. So A is greater than negative nine. That's our answer. And we can rewrite this with the variable coming first, if we would like. This can make it easier to work with an inequality. All we need to do is write the variable first. So A, then we need to make sure the symbol is going the correct way. That's very important. It's opening up towards A here, so a needs to remain greater than negative nine. Either way is correct there, just something to keep in mind. Now, as far as flipping the inequality symbol, we're going to talk more about that and why we need to do that after we wrap up number two. So again, our answer A is greater than negative nine. So A can be anything greater than negative nine. Now let's check a solution and let's use zero. So plug in zero for A. We have 36 is greater than negative four times zero. Negative four times zero gives us zero. And 
36 is greater than zero, so we are correct here. A is greater than negative nine. Now, before we move on to division, let's take a look at flipping the inequality symbol and why this happens when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative. Let's take a look at flipping the inequality symbol and why this happens when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative. Let's start with the example four is less than eight. Is this inequality true? Of course, four is less than eight. Now let's divide both sides by positive two and see if this remains true. And let's rewrite this inequality so we have four is less than eight and we are dividing both sides by two. On the left, four divided by two gives us two and then on the right eight divided by two gives us four so we have two is less than four so does this inequality remain true yes now let's divide both sides by negative two and see what happens and we will rewrite the inequality here so we have four and then i'm not going to put the inequality symbol quite yet because we're dividing both sides by a negative, negative two. And dividing both sides by a negative is going to change the inequality. So we have to flip the inequality symbol, change its direction for this to be true. So we have four divided by negative two is greater than eight divided by negative two. As soon as we divide both sides by a negative, that symbol flips, it changes direction. And that's because four divided by negative two is negative two, and then eight divided by negative two is negative four. Negative two is greater than negative four. So for that inequality to remain true, that symbol flips. So again, negative two is greater than negative four. Now, what if we did not flip that sign? Well, we would get negative two is less than negative four. Is that true? No. So notice the difference between dividing by a positive two and a negative two. Now let's apply this to number two, the number two that we already solved. We have 36 is greater than negative four A. So we need to isolate a by dividing both sides by negative four. So let's rewrite this. And we have 36 divided by negative four. And then since we are dividing both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol flips. And then we have negative four a divided by negative four. As far as the right side, these negative fours cancel each other out. A is now isolated, so we have A is greater than, and then on the left side, 36 divided by negative four gives us negative nine. So A is greater than negative nine. Now, when we solved this before, we didn't rewrite everything. We divided both sides from the original problem. We flipped after dividing and we ended up with the correct answer, and that was fine. But here I wanted to rewrite this to show that technically the symbol flips the moment both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative. So we wrote out that step to show that. Now, if you forget to flip the symbol, when you go to check a solution, you'll notice that it won't work. So it's important to check, and then you can catch that mistake. Again, just remember, flip the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative. So there's our multiplication section. Let's move on to division. Here are our division examples. Let's jump into number one where we have D divided by 10 is greater than six. So we need to isolate that variable of D. It's being divided by 10. So we need the inverse operation of division. That's multiplication. So let's multiply the left side of the inequality by 10. Whatever we do to one side of an inequality, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced. So multiply the right side by 10 as well. Now on the left side, 
These tens cancel each other out. So D is now isolated. We have D is greater than, and then on the right side, six times 10 gives us 60. So we have D is greater than 60. So any value greater than 60 is a solution of this inequality. It makes it true. And let's check a solution to make sure we are correct here. Let's use 70. 70 is greater than 60 and we'll work with that 10. So let's plug in 70 for D. So we have 70 divided by 10 is greater than six. 70 divided by 10 gives us seven and seven is greater than six. So this does work. We are correct here. D is greater than 60. Let's move on to number two where we have X divided by negative seven is less than or equal to negative three. So let's isolate X. It's being divided by negative seven. So we need the inverse operation. That's going to be multiplication. So let's multiply the left side by negative seven. And that means we need to multiply the right side by negative seven. Now remember, when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol flips. So as soon as both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative, that symbol flips. And here we are multiplying both sides by negative seven. So as far as the left side, these negative sevens cancel each other out. X is now isolated. The inequality symbol has flipped. And then on the right side, negative three times negative seven gives us positive 21. Remember, a negative times a negative equals a positive. So this is our answer. X is greater than or equal to 21. In other words, X can be anything greater than 21 or equal to 21. Now let's check a solution to make sure we are correct here. And let's use 28. That will work with the negative seven since we are dividing here. So let's plug in 28 for X. So we have 28 divided by negative seven is less than or equal to negative three. 28 divided by negative seven gives us negative four. So we have negative four is less than or equal to negative three. That is true, so we are correct here. Again, X is greater than or equal to 21. Now before we end, let's take a look at flipping the inequality symbol and why this happens when we multiply both sides by a negative. This will be similar to what we looked at earlier in the video when we divided both sides by a negative. Let's take a look at flipping the inequality symbol and why this happens when we multiply both sides by a negative. Let's start with the example, two is less than five. Is this inequality true? Of course, two is less than five. But let's see what happens when we multiply both sides by positive two. Let's see if this remains true. And let's rewrite this with both sides being multiplied by two. Now on the left, we have two times two, which gives us four. So we have four is less than, and then on the right, five times two gives us 10. So we have four is less than 10. So did the inequality remain true after multiplying both sides by two, positive two? Yes, four is less than 10. Now let's multiply both sides by negative two. So let's rewrite this with both sides being multiplied by negative two. But multiplying both sides by a negative changes the inequality. We have to flip the inequality symbol, change its direction. So we're multiplying the left side by negative two and then flip the inequality symbol and then we're multiplying the right side by negative two. As soon as both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative, that inequality symbol flips in order for the inequality to remain true. Because 
On the left, we are multiplying 2 by negative 2. That gives us negative 4. And negative 4 is greater than, and then on the right, we are multiplying 5 by negative 2. That gives us negative 10. Negative 4 is greater than negative 10. Now, what if that inequality symbol was not flipped? We would have negative 4 is less than negative 10. That inequality is not true. When we flipped the inequality symbol, that was true. Now let's apply this to number two that we already solved. We have x divided by negative seven is less than or equal to negative three. So we need to multiply both sides by negative seven. So let's rewrite this and we are multiplying both sides by negative seven. And since we are multiplying both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol needs to flip. So that inequality symbol needs to change direction as soon as we multiply both sides by a negative in order for this to be true. Now on the left, these negative sevens cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So we have X is greater than or equal to, and then on the right, negative three times negative seven gives us 21. So x is greater than or equal to 21. Now, when we solved this before, we didn't rewrite everything. We multiplied both sides from the original problem. We flipped after multiplying, and we ended up with the correct answer. But here, I wanted to rewrite this to show that technically, the symbol flips as soon as both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative. So we wrote out that step to show that. Like I mentioned earlier, if you forget to flip the inequality symbol, when you go to check a solution, you'll notice that it won't work. So it's important to check and you can catch that mistake. So there you have it. There's how to solve one step multiplication and division inequalities. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.